What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a banger of a video. I hope you guys enjoy this one, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also, we have got some new summer merch available now at Goblin420.com. We've got new tank tops, new t-shirts, all sorts of new designs available on the merch store, and also, we now have free shipping on eligible orders. So head over to the merch site and check out what we've got got to offer goblin420.com thank you all for the support if you do decide to buy anything please dm me a receipt so i can show you some love but without further ado let's dive right into the video also subscribe if you haven't already for real let's get to 600k smash that button but Today we've got a fun little story for you guys that I was reminded of because I was recently catching up with a buddy of mine named Brad, who you guys who have been watching my videos for a while, you probably are familiar with this dude. But recently I was catching up and we actually talked about this and I was like, you know, this would make kind of a banger. So... Hope you guys enjoy, let's dive right into it. Now, this happened back in my junior year of high school, around Thanksgiving break, and at this point, you know, I had just gotten out of school for my Thanksgiving break, you know, and that was a very prime time of year. Thanksgiving was always just... It's one of my favorite holidays. You get stoned out of your mind, you eat good food, it's a blast. I had just gotten on my Thanksgiving break, and I was hitting up some friends asking if anyone wanted to smoke, and Brad was the first person who responded to me. It was like, maybe a, it wasn't quite Thanksgiving yet, it was like a couple days before. So, you know, I, I still hadn't had my festivities yet, and I was trying to conserve most of my weed for Thanksgiving, because back at this point in my life, you know, me and all my friends, we were pissed broke we didn't have adult money we did we didn't have a bunch of weed to blow you know like you had to prep for certain occasions that you wanted to smoke a lot on you had to either put aside some weed or some money for that because if you didn't you weren't gonna have enough so you know I, I was hoping that maybe I could find someone who would be down to match with me because all I really had to put up was like half a gram you know so Brad, of course, responded to me, and he's like, yeah, dude, I'm down to match, you know, let's go, let's go smoke at the Forest Preserve or something. I remember, despite the fact that it was, like, November at this point, it was a pretty nice day out, so smoking outside was a, a pretty ideal play at this point, you know, or so we thought. So, I went over to Brad's house, you know, and we're chilling there, we're in his basement, and Brad's got a sick little basement, we're chilling out, we roll up a blunt, and his cousin is there as well. He had some family staying over for Thanksgiving, I mean, this guy's house was super nice, so, I, you could tell that this guy was probably the family member who had the family over like for the holidays and stuff I mean Brad's house was sick but his cousin is there and at this point I had never met his cousin before we're gonna refer to his cousin as Tony or some shit I don't know Tony works well we're just gonna roll with Tony I feel like I've used that name for different characters before but like this guy's never been in a story ever Th this is today's Tony all right today's Tony that's what we're gonna call him so I'm chatting with today's Tony and you know we're we're chatting it up a little bit and I find out that he's from New York now, one thing I've learned about talking to people from New York is you can't enjoy anything around them because it's better in New York. I mean, I could tell someone from New York that my aunt just got hit by a car and that dude would probably tell me that she would have gotten hit by a nicer car had it happened in Manhattan. I mean, seriously, like, you cannot enjoy shit around New Yorkers. I, I just don't know what it is. You talk about any kind of food, you cannot say a word about pizza. If, if you talk about any sort of pizza around a New York guy, they're going to lose their fucking mind. It doesn't matter what you have to say. They're like, no, dude, if it wasn't New York pizza, throw it in the garbage. It's just, it's not worth the effort. And that's exactly how this guy was. We sit there and we get into the classic food debate, you know, where we're chatting. I'm, I asked him at one point, I was like, so how do you like Chicago so far? And of course, this guy's like, oh, it's cool, but I miss the food of New York. Listen, no one gives a fuck that your pizza's a dollar a slice. I don't care. Deep dish is better. Don't get me started on this shit, all right? I'm pissing myself off right now. Let me take a breather. Alright, I took a breather and I also actually took a dab, so I feel much better now. But, either way, back on topic here. So, I'm chatting with this dude and of course he, he brings up the food. Every person I've met from New York that is outside of New York will always talk about how much they miss the food. Just try some new shit, you bastard. But either way... 
Whatever. Doesn't matter. We're chatting a little bit, and I threw Brad my weed, and he was the one who opted to roll up, because he had the wrap. So, we're kind of chilling out, waiting for him to finish rolling up, you know, and once he does, we ride out in his car out to this little forest preserve. It was only maybe a 10 or 15 minute drive from Brad's house, and this was a place that I'd smoked at pretty frequently. I mean, it, it was a common spot for people to go and smoke. It was really nice. You, you had some water you could go to, chill out by the water. It was a vibe. It was a really nice forest preserve. There was this one, like, cool little bridge that went over this stream, and you could just chill out there. It, it was a nice forest preserve. I like smoking in this place. So we get there, and as I mentioned, it was a nice day out. I mean, it was sunny out on this day, which was kind of weird for Illinois this late into November. Normally, it's cloudy all the time, but, I mean, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous day out, right? So... We're strolling, we're walking around, and it's fairly busy, you know, there's a lot of people. So we gotta find kind of a low-key spot to go spark this blunt. We're walking around, we're looking around, and finally we see this little gap in the trees and the bushes that leads up to the water. We go over to the water, we, we cut through the trees, go off the path a little bit, and we're in a pretty chill little secluded spot. We spark up the blunt, and we only had one blunt, mind you, because Brad also didn't have very much weed to spare. I mean, Brad's parents had money, but at this point, I don't think he did, because we were very young, and in high school, all my friends, well, not all, most of my friends were pretty broke. I was, I was pissed broke in high school. I mean, I shit you not, my net worth was probably like, like $50 at any given point in high school. I mean, sometimes more. I was in, I would, listen, any penny I touched went to getting fucked up or getting a McChicken. That, those are the only two expenses I had in my life at that point. But either way, back on topic. So, we spark up this blunt, and we're chilling for a little bit, you know, we're, we're just chatting it up, dicking around, and I get the blunt, you know, I get the blunt second. I hit it a few times, I pass it over to Brad, and this is where chaos ensues. You see, when I passed it over to Brad, I, I don't know whose grip failed, whether it was mine or his. I don't really know if he grabbed it and dropped it, or if I released my grip too soon as he was trying to grab it, but one way or another, the blunt fell. It didn't just fall to the ground. It fell in the water. Now, luckily, it was in, like, a very shallow part. Like, it wasn't in the middle of the water. We were still on land here, but this thing was fucking soaked, right? I mean, it, it was drowning. Now, Brad, like the madman he is, he grabs the thing again, and I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting there the whole time, and I'm just like, oh, my God, like, my bad, bro. We're both saying sorry about it. He grabs the shit, and he's like, dude, I think we could save it. Now, to today's Tony over here, all right, his New Yorker fucking cousin, this guy's like, are you serious? We can't save that shit. It's soaked. Brad keeps insisting. He's like, trust me, we could save it. The only time I agreed with to uh, today's Tony was this incident. I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of agree with Tony here. Like, I... I think this is a total loss. I mean, the, the whip's totaled, boys. Look at the thing. It's soaked. I think this is a loss, right? Brad keeps insisting. He's like, no, 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 dude. We could save this for sure. I know exactly what to do. We could just go dry it off in the car. So... I'm sitting there and I'm like, bro, this is the stupidest idea anyone's ever had in my life. We're walking back to the car because we had no choice. We had no more weed to smoke. This was everything. Our net worth was just dropped into the water. This is it, boys. I mean, we're broke at this point. So we go back to Brad's car and we sit down. And he cranks up the heat in his car and just holds the blunt up to it. And I'm sitting there and I'm just laughing to myself a little bit because I'm like, bro, this is the stupidest fuck. We could just go get drunk. Like we, like, we have other options. There's cheap options. I mean, we could get, like, six or seven bucks together, go, go buy some 40 ounces and get slapped, you know? Like, we don't have to do this. Plus, who knows what's been in that water? I mean, people are probably pissing in that water. Some little kid probably shit himself in there. I mean, there's probably dead fish in there. Could be a dead body. I mean, who knows? And we're about to spark that and inhale it. Like, yo... I love these dookie fumes, brother. Hell no. Absolutely not. But at the same time, what choice did I have? We were desperate. I'm rolling with Brad's plan. And deep down inside me, I knew that if he got this blunt to a smokable condition, I would have tapped that bitch again. Despite everything I just said, you bet your sweet ass I would have tapped that shit again. It was high school me. I was on fiend time, boys. Anything goes back then. But either way, back on topic here. So, 
we're chilling in the car and maybe like a good 10 or 15 minutes go by of Brad just holding this blunt up and Tony keeps telling him he's like dude let's just fucking go like let's try to get some more weed or something uh you know like come on let's go now Tony was younger than us mind you I don't even think Tony could drive yet I mean from what I remember I don't remember exactly how old he was this was the first and I think only time I ever met this dude but I don't think he was even 16 yet. So, I mean, this guy was just as broke as us, you know? It's not like Tony was, like, the cool older relative, like, oh, yeah, I got a big boy job, I got you guys. Hell no, bro. We're sitting in this bitch, and we got nothing, right? So, eventually, 10 or 15 minutes go by, and we're like, all right, we got to think of a new strategy, you know? We drive back to Brad's house feeling very defeated, and Brad's like, yo, just give me a minute. I'm going to get a hair dryer and try it on this blunt. So he tries hair drying the blunt, but this thing, mind you, I don't think I've quite described to you guys how wet this blunt was yet. It's not like, you know, sometimes, you know when, like, you go outside and it maybe recently rained and you drop a blunt super quickly, but you could pick it back up and maybe just hold the lighter to it and then save it? That was not the case with this blunt. This literally fell into a body of water and started to sail away like a little Viking ship. Floating and all. I mean, this thing was wet. It wasn't just the wrap that was wet. The weed inside was soaked, dude. I mean, the whole thing was just wet as fuck and it looked like it was gonna rip it looked like it already had holes in it but I hadn't inspected it very closely yet so I was just putting all faith in Brad to figure this out he goes and once we get back to his house he's got the fucking blow dryer on this thing and he's drying and drying and drying and finally he comes back to the table we were sitting at in his basement and he's like yo listen I think we could do this. He pulls out another wrap, and he guts the wrap, right? It was a Swisher that we smoked, of course. The high school classic, right? He guts that wrap, and he kind of bandages the spots where the wrap got a little ripped. Because obviously the wrap was so wet, it's flimsy, dude. It was, it, I mean, it was, I'm surprised the thing didn't snap in half with how moist it was, right? But he bandaged it up, and he's like, boys, I think we can try to smoke it. Now, we take this blunt. And we go outside of his house. We're standing out back in his backyard, and he tries to spark it. And it's a little bit strange. At first, it looked optimistic. There was a little bit of smoke, and we were like, okay, this might work. But what we didn't quite realize was that the weed in the middle was just so wet that it wasn't going to happen. Sure, the wrap might have dried enough to get some smoke off it, but it went out after like two hits. It wasn't even ever really fully lit. It was more like a little corner of it got lit and then just got, you know, put out. The weed never quite caught fire. So we inhaled some Swisher wrap. That's really about it. We realized very quickly that this was a lost cause, and we opted to gut the blunt and take the weed out. The problem is, this was our high school era, and none of us had a piece. Brad didn't have any glass at his house, little Tony obviously didn't bring any, and I don't think I had any glass at this point either, right? So we're sitting there, and we're in a predicament. We've pulled the weed out, and we could maybe maybe let it dry for a while and maybe blow dry it and smoke it later but we still have the issue of how are we smoking it now right we could just go get another wrap but we're fiending we don't want to wait for this weed to dry now that we've gutted the blunt so we opt to figure out a way to get more weed which is yet another issue in itself because we had no fucking money and of course i went with the classic i said boys I'll just go steal us some liquor. Now, for those of you guys who are watching my videos, or have been watching them for a while, pardon me, I should have said it like that at first, but for those of you who have been watching them for a while, you might remember that back in my high school days, I was a demon when it came to stealing. One of the ways that I would make money to pay for my weed or whatever else I was doing was I would go to grocery stores and steal liquor and sell it to my friends for cheaper than retail. It worked wonders, because at least back in this day, I feel like nowadays a lot of these stores are more hip to stealing, you know? They have better asset protection, these cameras are way more high-tech now, they have way more, like, you know, employees that are trained for this kind of stuff. Back in the day, I don't even think the grocery store I used to steal from had asset protection. And if they did, I've never seen that man in his damn life. They, we used to steal so much chicken from the bakery, like like the hot and ready like rotisserie chicken area, that they put a uniform security guard just standing at the little chicken display at the grocery store. That's how I know 
that they probably didn't have asset protection if they had to get a guy in uniform security just to protect the chicken. I think that was their only asset protection. So this shit was like taking candy from a baby back then. Nowadays, I would never risk this, dude. It's so different now. But back in the day, I was a minor as well. So, I mean, hell yeah, dude. Stealing as a minor, it, it's like free. I mean, you're, you're not actually going to jail for it, bro. They'll just scold you and call your mom, dude. So I'm, hey, terrible advice. Don't listen to that. But either way, I'm in this bitch. We go to the grocery store, and Brad and Tony, Tony's got his doubts. He's like, yeah, dude, I, I don't want to be a part of this shit. So we leave Tony back at Brad's house. So me and Brad, we ride out to the store. Now we get there, and Brad comes in with me. And I'm looking around, and mind you, it's a few days before Thanksgiving. So this store is fucking packed bro, which actually kind of worked out to our benefit because it allowed us to blend in with the crowd a little more. Now, we're two well-dressed young white kids, so they don't think we're stealing shit. And the key to stealing when you go to a store is always grab a cart. I feel like it makes you look way sketchier if you don't have a cart. So it doesn't, you know, it just looks like you're going to stuff shit in your pockets. I always make sure to grab a cart, even if I'm grabbing like one thing to steal. So we went in that bitch. And obviously, we look young. We can't go straight to alcohol. So we grab the cart, and we grab some snacks. We grab, like, a couple bags of chips. We grab, like, a bottle of soda, a little two-liter. And then finally... We quickly went straight to the liquor section. Now, mind you, I hadn't asked anyone if anyone wanted to buy any liquor yet. And I didn't really think about that until I was already in the store. And I had to quickly decide what kind of bottle to steal. I'm sitting there and I'm like, bro, what are these people like? What can I sell? Should I get some dark liquor? Should I get some vodka? Should I get some, some wine, some barefoot for the ladies? Should I get some beer, you know? I ended up going for the old reliable Smirnoff. Any, I mean, someone is going to buy a bottle of Smirnoff from you when you're in high school. I mean, it's the classic. I don't think I've ever drank, a, like, any Smirnoff in my life since the day I turned 18, quite honestly. The moment I was past high school age, Smirnoff was just over with, right? So I grabbed a big old bottle of that shit. Brad's with me, and as soon as I put it in my cart, we just fucking dip straight out the door. Now, the liquor section at this grocery store that I used to hit all the time was literally right next to one of the exits. Terrible rookie mistake on their part. Normally, they I feel like they try to put the liquor in the back or in an obscure spot. Nope. I mean, you literally, from the shelf where the vodka is, it is like maybe 15 feet to the exit door. No, a little more than that. A little more than that, but either way, I mean so close, dude, right? So that's all we did. We just fucking walked straight out, and there's so many other people that we just blend in with the crowd. I mean, no one even bats an eye at us, right? We just look like some normal-ass shoppers. So we skedaddle on out of there like taking candy from a baby. I found it's always harder to steal when there's less people, honestly, because... I'm not worried about other customers seeing me because I never conceal things when I steal from stores. That's the number one thing. I just walk out with that bitch. It's about quickness. It, it's not about hiding it. Once it's in your pocket, you're already fucked, right? Never stop, unless you're at like a, like a corner store like Walgreens. If you're stealing like bottles or like at a grocery store, hell no, bro. Just act like a normal customer and walk the fuck out with your cart, right? No problem. We did that shit all the time. So we got back to the car, and we grabbed the bottle, and we skedaddled on out of there back to Brad's house. But now, we had to find someone to buy our bottle of Smirnoff. I posted on the Snap story that, like, I was selling some gas. Like, I was plugging. Like, yo, who needs Smirnoff? Hit me. I was charging $20 for the bottle, which, you know... Uh, I mean, a little up there, but at the same time, it was a big bottle, right? So, a fair price nevertheless. And pretty quickly, because it was right before Thanksgiving and everyone's off school, I got hit up and was able to get rid of the thing. I mean, they even came and picked it up from us, right? I didn't even have to leave Brad's house. So, we had our 20 bucks, and now it was time to grab some fucking weed. Now, Brad insisted that we grab from his guy, which I was like, yeah, sure, you know, whatever, no big deal. He hits up his guy, and his weed guy comes through, who is someone that I'd never met before. Brad would always just buy weed from random fucking people. I don't know how, this kid always had a lot of plugs, and I don't know where he met these people. But this guy pulls up, and he comes down, and we got it 20 bucks, and he gets us right. He's like, yo, I got you guys, I got you guys on the 2 grams for the 20, which, mind you, back then in high school... 
For good weed, that's a fantastic deal. I mean, kids were getting 20 a gram back in the day. It's not like nowadays where these kids are, they're smoking the exotic, bro. Like all these, all these, listen, you high schoolers, you smoking shit, you young, young people nowadays, you have no idea how good you have it in the weed scene. Back in my day, we were smoking mid and we were getting taxed, bro. And I'm not even that old, bro. I was smoking weed in like 2015 shit, but the game has changed so much in the past like five or so years. It's crazy. Back then, this was some like above average weed and only 10 a gram was an insane deal. We were like, yo, let's fucking do it. So we grabbed that shit and problem solved, boys. We had our weed mission accomplished. Long day, mind you, but we pulled it off. We rolled up another blunt and finally, we just smoked it outside of Brad's house. We were like, yeah, fuck this, dude. We're not, we're not like... We're not walking through the forest. We're not risking it for the biscuit again. So we smoked that blunt and all was well. And after we finished that blunt, I started arguing with Tony again about New York food. And I pissed him off pretty bad. So I left soon after. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, shout out Brad. Glad to talk to you again the other day. I know you're probably watching this shit. Shout out to you. Either way, see you guys later. Peace out, gamers.